Hi students, today we will have our first lecture in ergonomics. Uh, we will talk about uh, some of the basics, uh, basic things about ergonomics, what it is, what it deals with. So uh, let us start. Now, when you look around you in your daily life, you will see a lot of uh, items, products, uh, things that you use every day. Now, all of these items, when you, when you look at them, uh, who, who is using them? We, the humans, right? You use it, I use it. Uh, we use products all day, every day. And uh, now these items around you that you are surrounded with, they are designed, okay? Someone designed them. Uh, not only the products, even the space you live in, the house, uh, the chair you sit on, everything, everything is designed for who? For to be used by humans, people, okay? <clears throat> now, here is where the uh, science of ergonomics comes. It basically gives you information, detailed information that will let you understand the human body uh, in a detailed way that will help you design better for the human body. Because most of the designs, as we see, are designed for human use. So if everything is designed or most of the things are designed for human use, that means we need to understand humans very well. So everything about the human body, even the mind, we need to understand, okay? So that we can design better for these uh, uh, people, you know, the target users. We usually call them target users in design. Uh, you're not always uh, designing for uh, all the people, Sometimes you have specific target group, groups of people that you're designing for, but we will discuss this uh, as we go along. So everything in our world is designed, taking the human body into consideration in every design. So if we understand the human body, this means we can create uh, better designs. And if we don't understand, we will have bad designs. You cannot design uh, anything for anybody without understanding, without understanding the person or the people or whatever you're designing for. You need to understand this group in every way. Now, look at these items here. There are a lot of products, uh, as you can see. If you look at them one by one, uh, all of them are designed for human use. All of them are designed for to be used by people in some way. <clears throat> now, if the designer, for example, of these eyeglasses does not understand the uh, human head measurement wise, uh, in every detail, okay? Uh, you will not be able to design uh, eyeglasses that basically fit the human or can be used or are comfortable. Every item is like that. So some items involve, if you notice, uh, certain body parts, like for example, the eyeglasses are connected more to the head, to the eyes, to the ears. For example, the camera, um, the camera is connected more to the hands, okay? So you're using the camera with your hands. So it has to fit into this body part. It has to be designed suitable for the specific body part or body parts that will come in contact with this object. Um, so it depends on what is it that you're designing and for whom you are designing. Now, of course we are designing for people, but uh, for which type of people? Like for example, 
there is a big difference if you talk about uh, children or adults or old people, or for example, uh, even people from different ethnicities, they have different characteristics. They're all human, but uh, some measurements will be different uh, in the body. Uh, other things could be a little different. So uh, it depends uh, on your target group of people who you're designing for. And uh, what is it that you're designing for? And for which body part? Which body part will be involved? or body parts. Now, uh, if you're designing shoes, for example, uh, this is more connected to the feet and to the legs. And actually it's connected to the whole body because while you are walking, uh, basically the shoe design influences the whole body, the whole body. So you need to understand the whole body, but with concentration on the legs and the feet. So uh, every design you need to understand which body part is involved. We will talk about these things more uh, as we uh, discuss this lecture further, but uh, so we need to know that everything around us is designed for uh, humans that you will be uh, dealing with as a designer. You will design most of all for humans, I believe. And uh, you need to have very good grounding, very good understanding, in uh, ergonomics, which basically deals with the understanding the human body in a very detailed way. So that when you design something for the human body, you design it in a correct way. If you ignore ergonomics, uh, you will have missed a big part of uh, making your design successful. So, <clears throat> now, here, when we talk about ergonomics, just a note, okay? Uh, you, if you read something on the internet or, you know, in books, you'll find sometimes they mention ergonomics and sometimes human factors engineering. So what's the difference? It's basically the same thing, just ergonomics as a word is used in uh, Europe. And human factors engineering, which means the same, is used in America, okay? Now, the uh, origin of the word comes from the Greek, from the Greek language, uh, meaning uh, ergon and nomoi, which means work and natural laws. So, ergonomics is the study, study basically uh, science, okay? of designing products to be better adapted to the human body and fit, fit with all needs. So whatever the human body needs, ergonomics, okay, deals with how to make things fit the human body. The goal of this is what? To be able to perform tasks and use products safely, efficiently, and comfortably. So perform tasks. What is a task? So when, when I do something, I'm performing a task. For example, if I'm taking this pen and I'm writing, this is performing a task. When I take this uh, cup and I'm drinking, this is also performing a task, okay? Basically, if you uh, think about it, your entire day, involves performing tasks. Every time you move, every time you do something, you're performing a task. Okay. Now these tasks that you perform, you need to perform them safely, efficiently, and comfortably. Ergonomics basically makes sure, gives you guidelines of how to design things to uh, make them safe and efficient and comfortable for use. So imagine you use uh, a product and you get injured. That means uh, maybe, I mean injured because of its design, the way it's designed, it's not safe. Uh, this means uh, the design is faulty and needs to be redesigned. Also, it's very important to be able to perform tasks efficiently. I, I need to be efficient while performing the task. If I'm not, then, uh, 
there is some also, uh, it could be some fault in the design. So you can redesign uh, things to make performance more efficient, performing tasks. And comfortability. Am I feeling comfortable while uh, performing the tasks? This is also uh, often uh, related to the way something is designed. Like when I sit on this chair now, do I feel comfortable or not? Or do I feel not comfortable? If I'm not comfortable, uh, I would want to change the chair. I would never buy this chair again, this type. It will mean it's not well designed ergonomically to fit with my body needs. So, <clears throat> ergonomics is also the study of the interaction between the human body, products, and the surrounding environment. This is very important. So, it deals with the ergonomics deals with the human body. We already mentioned, but it also deals with the interaction between the body and what's going on around. So the product, this is for example a product. Okay, the interaction. Now, once I uh, I take this into my hand, I am actually interacting with this. The interaction starts as soon as you grab this and start doing something, a task with it. So ergonomics deals with this interaction between human and product, and also with the environment, what's around us, okay? So right now I'm sitting in this office. So my environment uh, is, a, is a specific type, has specific characteristics. When I go, for example, to the kitchen, <clears throat> the kitchen environment is very different than my office environment. It has different characteristics. When I go outside on the street, the environment outside is very different than inside the house. So what characteristics uh, does every environment have? So it's very important. We will see it also later. We will discuss more about it. So ergonomics deals with the interaction between people and products and the environment. You cannot separate these. You cannot. Always when you use a product and do a task with it, you are sitting in some kind of an environment. And you cannot ignore that. If you ignore it, uh, well, the result is a bad design because you missed information. In design, it's very important to take into uh, account all of the information. If you miss information, you will not be able to design it to uh, basically, for example, deal with this environment in a correct way. <clears throat> the aim of ergonomics is to design products in a people centered way. This is a terminology used in design. When you say something is designed people-centered, in a people-centered way. That means the person, the human, is in the center of the importance in this design. So the target user or target users take a central role in the design. Well, most of the time, in most designs, this is the case. In most designs, you have to put the person as a central element, because this is the this is the thing you're designing for. Okay, you cannot ignore the people. Now, when you look at this picture here, you will see so many different types of people. You know. Some people are short, some people are tall, some people fat, thin. Uh, you have different age groups, uh, children, adults, uh, old people, uh, people with special needs, injuries, disabilities, uh, different cultures, uh, sorry, ethnicities. 
So uh, now all of these people, um, they, they don't all have the same shape and size and needs of the body, I mean. So uh, you need to understand all of these people, basically. And if you're designing for a specific target group of people, let's say, for example, um, I'm, I'm designing something only for the people who have a disability. Uh, for example, um, those people who are on wheelchairs cannot walk. Or, for example, people that have problems with the eyesight. Or, or you know? So uh, if I'm designing for this type of people, I'm actually focusing on their needs. Not, not all, like... When you're designing, you're not always designing for everybody. Some designs are for everybody. You have to find common characteristics among all the people. And design, make your design in a way to fit with as much as possible characteristics of all the people. And sometimes you're designing for specific very limited target group of users with specific needs. The age also is very important here. If you're focusing on children, children are totally different than if you're designing something for adults. Measurement-wise, uh, need-wise, everything, uh, it's a totally different world than for adults. If you're designing for old people, again, a lot of a lot of things uh, will not. If you're designing, you cannot put adults and old people in the same category. So it's like each one has a different need or different needs. Okay. So design is not really uh, simple. Like take a paper, uh, draw something, and uh, say you are a designer. No. Or uh, uh, learn something on a computer program, and you already see yourself a designer. No. You have to go very deeply into things, and think very deeply, research very deeply, understand very deeply. And believe me, to understand the human, it's not an easy job. Uh, ergonomics as a science, try to a lot. Uh, you will find a lot of books, uh, basically with information about the human body in every way possible. Um, but still, now you as a designer, you have a lot of information in your hands. But which information to use and how to use it in your design? This still remains on you. So if I have a book in my hand about ergonomics and I read a lot of things about the human body, but I, I don't understand, I don't know how to apply this in a design, then what's the point? Then I will still not be able to design correct. You really need to understand and you really need to know which information to select and use depending on what you are designing. This is the complication in design that uh, today I may be designing uh, this pen, tomorrow I'm designing this, next week I could be designing, for example, a bicycle, then, uh, you know, so sometimes you change from this to this and everything has its own needs and requirements to consider. Uh, if you're an interior designer, for example, the same thing, okay? Even though it is kind of a similar category, you're only designing interiors, but each interior has its own needs, human needs. So if you're designing a, a classroom in the university, it's very different than if you're designing a classroom for small children. Or... Uh, for example, an apartment. The living room is different than the bathroom needs. 
always this is connected to the human use, how the human will use this space or humans, you know? So ergonomics is used in all design fields, absolutely. Even in fields that are not designed. Ergonomics is a very, very wide discipline. Science, it's, it's actually a science, okay? Um, <clears throat> in some universities outside of Jordan, you can study ergonomics as a university degree. Four years, you can study ergonomics only. All the subjects that you study about ergonomics. So can you imagine how big this science is? We, in our class, which is a one class only in design that deals with ergonomics, we will cover some of the very, very basic stuff, just understanding what it is, um, the very basic things that would uh, help you uh, to know at least where to find, how to find, to use uh, while you are designing something. But in reality, we cannot cover the science of ergonomics in great detail because we are only having one class. So we will deal with general things, understanding the subject. Then we will apply some specifics to projects, but really to learn how to apply ergonomics. You need to, you need to maybe do hundreds of projects and uh, read so much information and get experience to, to really become good at it. So uh, we are covering the basics now. So ergonomics you will find in every type of design. So if you're an interior designer, for example, and you're designing space, okay? So this space, humans will be using it. Humans will be walking around, for example, these tables. Humans will be using these items here. Uh, these humans will have all kinds of needs. Uh, maybe the way you design the lighting, the way you put the windows, the where you put the doors. Uh, it's very important because uh, small mistakes in the design can make the space uncomfortable. It's like uh, maybe uh, you have walked into some uh, apartments or some buildings and sometimes you feel something is not right. Like, I don't feel comfortable here, you know? It's because of the design. It's because of the design of the space, of the interior. And other times you go into a space, into a, let's say, an apartment and you feel very, very relaxed and comfortable. So, Interior designers have to deal with all kinds of things. This is what I'm saying, just uh, you know, from here and there, very small examples. But there is a lot more factors that uh, you have to deal with. Look at this, for example, item, a computer uh, keyboard. Look the way it's curved, look the way it's designed. Why is it uh, in this way? I mean, okay, we have the straight, you know, key keyboards. Okay, but this one, why, why they designed it in this way? Well, again, <clears throat> it has to do with the human body, with ergonomics. So the designer uh, was observing probably the human body movement. So when I sit and look, my hands are, my, my hands are connected to the elbow. If I want to move the hands, because of this pivot point, it moves in a circular way. So this is a natural movement of the human body. So when I move my hands, look how it moves in a circular, in a, in a curvature way. And look how the keyboard is designed, okay? So it is to make the keyboard, an attempt to make the keyboard more comfortable. So when I'm typing and moving my hands like this and I'm typing, it's more natural than if, if I have to move my hands in a, in a straight line. So this is an understanding of ergonomics 
uh, of how the human body functions and how we can fit this need into the design of the product to fit, you know, to make it more comfortable for use. And if I'm comfortable, I can work more efficiently. Maybe my typing will be quicker, more efficient. But if I have to move my hands in an uncomfortable way, I will not be very efficient at my work. Look at this item, for example, here. Look the way the shape is designed. It's very specific, you know, with these here, um, here curves. If you notice, this is where the hand holds the device. And this type of design is made it looks like it's made for people that have problems with the hands, like, for example, old people, uh, maybe, the, you know, arthritis diseases and the hand shaky. So when they hold something, they need support. They need support for holding because uh, it might drop. So uh, this is this here, the shape. It's very specific designed for to fit specific type of user hands. And also, if you notice the uh, buttons, look at these buttons, okay? Uh, they are uh, quite large, okay? They are quite large than a normal uh, device of this type. Uh, maybe for people who uh, also cannot see very well. So uh, I can still use it and it's simplified, bigger. The shape uh, helps me to hold. So it, it is designed for specific target group of people here. So their needs are taken into consideration. Look at this spoon, for example. Look the way it rotates and, and, and holds the hand. Again, it's with people who cannot control their hand movements right. They cannot hold the spoon like this. Not everybody can control the spoon like this. What, what if you have hand problems, you know? So it might drop. So you need extra support. So this is designed for a specific target group of uh, users that have needs, specific needs. Uh, look at this, for example, item. This is uh, uh, sports uh, clothes, okay? So if you're a fashion designer, okay? You're dealing with people all the time. You're designing what? Clothes for the people, for the person to wear it. So uh, this is not a simple manner, uh, a simple thing. What type of clothes, for what type of occasions you're designing? Now, <clears throat> sports uh, clothes, for to play uh, sports, you need to, they need to have specific characteristics. So, so that when you put them on the body, they function correctly. So uh, you have to consider what the human needs are during, for example, playing some kind of a sport. And also what will happen to the human body, like for example, sweating uh, while you're running. Um, for example, if you're wearing uh, a headscarf, you know, a headscarf uh, for these girls, for example, uh, also they have to be designed in a way so that when you're running and jumping, they don't uh, come off your head. So uh, you have to consider the human body, its needs in this situation, in this environment. So the environment, how does that affect you? Maybe you're outside, the sun can't on you, on your clothes. Uh, so the outside environment, even if you're indoors, okay? So every situation has to be considered and then decided what type of materials you have to do this clothes from. And uh, when a person is playing, you know, uh, maybe I will move my hands up, I will keep moving, I will keep, uh, maybe I fall on the ground. So the clothes have to be meeting all those requirements, all those needs in this situation, while the human body is moving, you have to always 
consider that the human is not uh, standing still, static. The human body is always in movement. So what if uh, you design some uh, piece of clothes and when I pick my hand up, it uh, rips here because th the designer did not take into consideration uh, this movement and uh, the material of the clothes and the size is not suitable for this kind of movement. So a lot of details need to be thought about before you design anything for the human. What about these signs here, you know? Now these are usually designed for everybody, for all the people. So anyone looking at them, even from uh, different uh, countries, you know, even if you don't understand the language of these people, but if you see these uh, signs, you should understand what they mean. You know, so these are designed, <clears throat> this is usually graphic designers uh, job most of the time. So they should be designed in a way so that the people, everybody understands or, or almost everybody, I would say, understands what they mean. So this is an example of uh, design for uh, uh, most people, everybody taken into consideration, not only specific uh, types and specific target groups of people. So they have to be clear. They have to uh, be in a way uh, to fit um, like my brain, okay? My understanding, when I look at them, I should be able to understand. So uh, here, it's not only about the physiology of the human body. In all designs, in all areas, you need to also understand the psychology of the human body and the human mind, the psychology. How do humans think? And this is very complicated. Uh, I mean, you need, you will study, uh, I think, uh, psychology, but in another subject. But that's not enough for you to, to know how to design. Uh, it's basically every project, you need to again start from the start, research, understand before you design something. You may think that your design is perfect because you are looking at it with your own mind. Like for you, maybe you think, oh, this is a, a beautiful color. But when you show it to other people, everybody will hate it. And when you are designing, you're designing not for yourself, you're designing for others. You're designing for other people. So you have to be very objective. It's not about what you like. It's about what others will like, other people. As a designer, that's how it is. If you studied fine art, okay, fine art, and you draw a drawing, and it can't be about me, about what I feel, what I want, it's not about anybody else. But when I'm a designer, what am I designing? I'm designing for who? For other people, not me. Maybe I like this, but nobody else likes it. So I have to change it. And to know what other people uh, like and think and prefer, this needs research. This needs understanding of the human body physiologically and mentally. What's in the mind of the people? And you should understand that uh, people from different, uh, well, even in the same country, in the same culture, you will find so many different ways of thinking. You need to find a way how to group this together when you de design something for a certain uh, target group of users different ages, age groups, for example, also they think in a different way. And if we go to different cultures, different nationalities, this becomes even more complicated, the variety. But 
there is always there is always the similar things you have to find the similar things among these people that are always kind of present in the human it is human nature you know some things are kind of very similar among all people so it depends again what are you designing for whom are you designing during the ancient times. So since very, very long time ago, people have been what designing objects which are functional, useful, and made to fit human ergonomics, the ergonomics of the human entirely. So they're comfortable for uh, these tools, for example, here that you see are comfortable for uh, holding. Uh, so when I, when I uh, put this tool in my hand, uh, it's comfortable. It's designed for uh, the ergonomics of my hand in a correct way. So also when I'm using it, okay, also this is the function. How does it function? When I'm using this tool, also it is designed to do its job. It's useful. It can do its job correctly. So how, how did, uh, you know, people in the past uh, be able to design uh, tools that are, for example, uh, ergonomically correct. Ergonomics did not exist at that time. We didn't have ergonomics as a science in that time. So what did they do? How did they design? And what's the difference between the ancient way of designing and now our way? We will see that in a moment. So in the past, People used to design in the way past, I mean, you know, like thousands of years ago, uh, using trial and error in uh, most of the designs. Trial and error. What does this mean? So I'm designing this, uh, for example, tool, okay, whatever it is, I'm designing it and I test it, okay, for example, uh, I give it to someone, please. Uh, is this comfortable? Does it fit with your hands? Uh, can you use it? Then I look at the, all the problems, the mistakes, the, there's something wrong, for example, in this size here, or the length is not suitable or whatever. Then I go and redesign it. I make changes. So this is trial and error. I try something and then I test it. I try again and I test it until I get it right. I don't have data. I don't have a book, you know, to read about ergonomics, about humans, about their sizes, about uh, uh, details about the body parts. I don't know anything. I'm, I'm using trial and error. This is actually an actual example of uh, in, in history. Someone was uh, designing, you know, trying to design a device to fly, you know, and he jumped from a mountain with the designed device because he's using trial and error. So what happened? He fell down and he died, unfortunately. There is no other way how to test this. You know, does it work or doesn't it work? You have to put it on your back and test it. Unfortunately, it ended up with disaster. Today, nowadays, we cannot use trial and error in uh, design. We cannot, because it's very uh, expensive to do nowadays. Why is it expensive? <clears throat> so, because with our technological development, uh, nowadays we use millions of materials, not like in the past. For example, only stone, only metal, metal and wood, for example, together. Um, and uh, for example, the how to make the everything was hand hand tools, not like today, complicated machines, complicated production methods. Uh, everything is uh, every product nowadays is uh, most of the products are highly complicated. If you see, for example, this uh, simple pen, this is a, a pen. We don't even think about it when we look at it. But in fact, it's very complicated, this. Very complicated. Look, 
if, 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 if you open this, only this part here has uh, how many parts? One part, two parts, three parts. And even they are made from different materials and the way they are shaped, the way. So each of these parts was made by a different machine in a different way, complicated, big machines, expensive machines. If you see this part of the pen, if you open it, if you open it, you will see so many parts inside. So each made by machines. And later they are assembled together. Okay. And the end result is a pen which you think is very simple, but it's very complicated in terms of materials, in terms of production methods. So what is important here to understand is if you're the designer of this pen, okay? If you're the designer and you make a mistake in the design and this design goes later to production, okay? So you're the designer, you do the drawings, you, you put the drawings in a computer program like Illustrator, for example, or 3D uh, program like AutoCAD, okay? And you're very happy about it. And then you send it further for uh, to be manufactured, produced. And then nobody discovers the mistake and it's made, it's produced and put in the shops. It's going to be a disaster because the people who will buy it and use it and find the mistake, they will never buy this pen again. So a lot of money will be lost in the process. Even if they discover the mistake in the late stages, in the production or pre-production, it's still very expensive because you have to go back to the start. You see the design process of how you design something. It's not simple. It goes through many stages, the design process. It starts, for example, with uh, an idea or a problem that needs to be solved. And then it goes through stages, many stages until the manufacturing, the production stage in which it is made. And then it goes again through other stages, marketing, selling, whatever, okay? Until it reaches the final uh, target user, the human that will be using this. The human comes at the end, okay? So, if mistakes are discovered late in the process, it's very expensive because everything costs money. Everything costs money. So if you have at a later stage to go back to stage number one or two and repeat, a lot of money will be lost. In general, this is uh, basically the reason. Now, if you look, for example, at the here, cars, imagine a car, how complicated is that? How many parts in a car? How many details? Imagine if they make a mistake in the design. At any stage, at any point, at any place in the car, if there is a mistake, what will happen? The disaster will be so big that the company who produces, makes these cars will close. Could close actually, could fail totally. Uh, so, with nowadays, with uh, most of our products and uh, what, what we make being so complicated, the design must be perfect. There is no room for mistake. At least if there is a mistake, it should be discovered early, not late. If late, it's not good at all. Uh, so we, there is no room, there is no room for trial and error design. You have a very big responsibility as designers and uh, you need to uh, collect and know about a lot of things, a lot of areas uh, so that really you can become good designers. If you lack knowledge uh, in, in areas, it will affect your design work. Like if you don't know enough about ergonomics, it will affect. If you, if you, sometimes you even need knowledge that is outside of your field. Like sometimes you need to apply some engineering knowledge. Of course, designers consult with specialists. You're not alone. 
In some projects, you're not alone. You're, you're not doing the whole project alone. You're consulting with other specialists. You're working in a group. But what I mean is, in, uh, if you're working alone on a project or you don't have access to a lot of specialists, uh, the more knowledge you have, the better. The more things you know, the more things you read about, the more things you try to understand, the better for you as a designer. The less knowledge you have, the less you pay attention to your studies. Uh, you know, the things that we teach you here, it's just for four years, it's so basic. It's the basics you learn. Even when you graduate, you still know the basics, considering what you need to know for to become a really successful designer. You need to keep developing yourself. So what can we say about uh, the students who don't even learn the basics? What kind of designers will they become? So uh, even if you graduate and you have an excellent mark, this does not mean you're an excellent designer. The ex how excellent you are will be tested in the real world. And the real world needs a lot of, a lot more knowledge than you can imagine. So in this class, for example, uh, we learn about ergonomics, but it is the, I would say the ABC, it's, it's not even reaching the ABC of ergonomics. Okay? The basics, only the basic, very basics. You need to know that there is something called ergonomics, understanding of the human body. But in the future, where you find extra information about it, you will need, you will need, you cannot rely only on what you learned in the school, in the university. Anyway, let's continue here in our uh, subject. So today there is no room for trial and error because it will be too costly. It will cost too much money if mistakes are discovered late in the design process. <clears throat> now, ergonomics as a science, you know, we talked uh, a little bit about it, about what it deals with and so on, but ergonomics as a science, when did it start and why? So it, it started about uh, 100 years ago uh, in, during the First World War. And uh, it started for a reason, as a science, I mean. Now people, uh, as, as we mentioned before, even in the past, were trying to make products ergonomically sound to fit the human body, but they did not have a science. So the science started and started developing. So nowadays we have a science of ergonomics that developed over a hundred years. So there is a lot of information today, but when it started, they started with zero information. So uh, it started during the First World War when factories, you know, people who work in the um, factories, manufacturing uh, products, <laughs> had to, because of the war, they had to transform the factory. Like, for example, if you were manufacturing certain items, now you have to manufacture weapons. And uh, people were forced and pushed to manufacture fast and quickly and <clears throat> over long hours. So from morning till evening, you're manufacturing weapons. Now, this caused a lot of problems for people. They were under stress, under stress, under uh, pressure. Uh, and uh, do you know what stress can do to the human body? Can you imagine how damaging it can be? <clears throat> so if you're just tired and stressed and under pressure, <clears throat> it can damage your health. It can damage your psychology. It can basically damage um, the way you think and the way you do things. When you're relaxed and uh, you slept well, you're a totally different person than when you're not sleeping, all the time working, under stress. Uh, you will start making mistakes. 
you'll start uh, behaving in an irrational way. And depending on how long this goes on, <coughs> your health will be totally damaged. So these people, because they were under stress and uh, they were forced to work, not efficiently, but extra efficiently, okay? They started making mistakes. So if I have a machine here and I'm working on it and I'm so tired, uh, maybe I will put my hand under the machine and it will cut my fingers or my hand because I'm so tired, I cannot, uh, I cannot see properly anymore. And the machines in the past, they were uh, kind of uh, a little bit more basic, not like today, not highly advanced. Uh, so uh, errors, mistakes are easily to be made. So uh, the Industrial Fatigue Research Board was formed in that period to investigate and research how, how people can be uh, made to work more efficiently and to reduce their stress level, to uh, make their environment that they're working in better so that they can produce and work what is required of them, but without getting injured, without uh, the stress overload and other health problems. So they formed this board that started researching uh, this area. And this is the start of ergonomics, the start of how to do, how to make things, how to design environments, working spaces, uh, machines, products, everything to better fit the human body needs, the human body physiologically and psychologically. Also from that period, there was a, a designer his name is uh, Kovar, who was uh, observing factory workers who work in the uh, clothing uh, industry. So they were using scissors, scissors, not like this one, of course, but <laughs> they were using scissors and all day long, they were cutting, 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 okay? So he started noticing that the workers started getting blisters on their hand, uh, injuries. So he thought, okay, how can, how can I improve this? How can I improve the design of the scissor so that if you have to work long hours and repetitive movements, look at this repetitive movement. Now, if I, if I just use the scissor like this without moving, I will not get injured. But when I have to use it for hours, do this all day, work, 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 what will happen? There will be some pressure points, okay, on my hands, which all the time get pressure, pressure, pressure. Uh, there is a lot of friction. So if the design is not good, not designed to fit the human body needs, uh, I will get injuries. So this designer put uh, some kind of a plastic cover uh, on, uh, on the scissors, and he let the workers work. And then he examined, he examined where, on which points the most pressure happens between what? Between the fingers and the scissor. So the pressure points. And he used that data to try to redesign the scissor in a better way. Now, again, at that time, you need to consider that this was a hundred years ago. They, the scissors, the scissors were made out of metal, metal, not plastic. There wasn't plastic at that time. And there wasn't uh, machines that can manufacture plastic items. So the scissor was made entirely out of metal and the metal you cannot, you cannot form uh, in, uh, organic or curvature ways in an easy manner. You cannot, for example, look at these scissors here, the way, look at these handles, okay? How, how organic, how there is a care from here, cares from there, everywhere cares to, to make it more comfortable for the shape of the hand because our shape, our hands made out of cares naturally. So 
when they had to make it out of metal. This was not possible. This was not possible. So uh, it was a big challenge how to form metal, how to, how to make it even remotely comfortable. Uh, so it was a big challenge at that time. But later, when the new materials started appearing, especially the plastic, rubber, you know, like the rubber, which is a little bit soft, uh, a lot more design possibilities emerged. So nowadays, handles, the handles can be made very comfortably. You need only to have the idea and to have the observation and to know ergonomics of this body part very well, the ergonomics, how it functions, everything about it, its measurement, what it does during movement, all of this ergonomics. So if you know this knowledge, you can design very good uh, handles, okay? If we're talking about a scissor, so it can fit perfectly. And if I use it for a long time, I don't get injured. Nowadays, we have a lot of materials, a lot of production methods, a lot of uh, things that in the past uh, people did not have. So it was a challenge to design something ergonomically sound. There is a famous uh, designer, again, from around that period. His name is Henry Dreyfus. Uh, he summarized uh, what is ergonomics in a nice way. Now, we discussed all of this, actually, but uh, let's just see it as a summary, what he said. He contributed a lot for the development of ergonomics. He contributed a lot. So let's see. Uh, he actually wrote books and, uh, you know, uh, about measurements and these kind of things. So let's see what he said. We bear in mind that the object we are working on, the object, the product, okay? The product is, is going to be used by people in some way. So we have to always keep in mind that people will be using whatever we're designing. So if the point of contact, it's very important, okay, what the point of contact, where is the point of contact, okay? The points of contact between my fingers and this product. Or if I have this one, where are the points of contact now between the product and my body part? So if the point of contact become between the product and the people becomes a point of friction, that means not comfortable, then the designer has failed. On the other hand, if people are made safer, more efficient, more comfortable, or just happy while using you know, the product, then the, design, the, the designer has succeeded in the design. So being happy is the end result. So if you're happy using this, for example, then obviously all of the other points are met. It's safe, it's efficient, you can work efficiently with it, you're comfortable, then you will be happy in the end. If you're not happy, then there's something wrong in the design. So it's enough for today for the introduction of uh, what is ergonomics. We will continue our next uh, lecture with the system design and how system design uh, relates to ergonomics and why we need to know about it. So uh, thank you for watching. Thank you for watching and see you uh, next uh, time in our next lecture.